All right, welcome to calculus. We're going to look at integration by parts. Now, one of the things that we want to pay attention to when we work through doing any integration is the structure of the piece we're trying to integrate. Now, at this point, hopefully you're already familiar with integration by substitution, which mainly says take some u value, take a u, and pick one, uh, one of these pieces over here to do that with. So let's just say, uh, let's say we take the 3x squared minus 6, and we do that derivative, which gives us, uh, let's see here, that would be just 6dx, right? Well, we don't have a 6dx, but we do have an x dx. So I forgot my u there. So if I do 1 6 du, that gives me x dx. Well, I, have, I, I actually have that now, right? So now I can do 1 6 times the integration of u to the fifth du. And now I can do that integration quite easily. That gives me 6 uh, u to the 6 over 6 times 1 6, and then plus my c on the back end of that. And it really doesn't matter where you put the plus c in the front or the behind, as long as you're adding it in there. And that gives us 3x squared minus 6 to the 6 power all over 36 plus c. Now why did that work? Why did we why were we able to use a u substitution there? Well we were able to do that because the derivative of this piece right here on the interior of that matches uh, the the yeah the exterior piece of that. Okay, so the derivative of the interior piece matched the exterior piece. So that's why that worked that way for us. Now that's not integration by parts, that's integration by substitution. So let's look at something else. Let's look at another example. Let's say we got e to the x here. And then let's say we got uh, times 3x plus 2, and then we have dx here. All right? Now in this instance, this is different. Okay, let's let u equal something. Let's let u equal 3x plus 2. Two, which means that du is equal to 3 dx, which is actually there, except what do we do with this x business up here? Let me show you. So we'd have 1 third, if we divide by 3 there to get the dx's to match, and then we have e to the x, and then we have du. We've actually made this worse because we don't actually have what u is equal to. Now we could go back over here and I guess we could solve for x and then stick that in there and then it'd be in terms of u, but then we run into a whole nother problem to deal with. So this doesn't seem like necessarily this is the, the best way to do this just yet. Okay, well, so this is where integration by parts comes in and is useful to us, paying attention to the fact that we have two different functions. We have these two being multiplied together and one is not a derivative of the other. Okay, and that's where substitution was useful to us, is that we had these two functions, and one was a derivative of the other. We had, like if we, if right here we had x squared as the, the power on this e, then maybe doing u substitution with u equal to x squared might be a little bit more useful to us, although that plus 2 would cause problems as well. So here's the idea behind integration by parts, is I'm actually going, I got the first part, I got the u business here. Now I need to pick dz. And I'm going to find z, okay? Now you may be thinking, oh, that's backwards. We picked u. Don't we need to pick z? No, we need to pick u, and we need to pick dz. It's just the way this works out, okay? Go with me on this. dz, I'm going to pick to be e to the x dx. And this is nice because if you think about this, that is just going to be e to the x, okay? So now what I do? Now I take these two pieces, and I take these two pieces, okay? So I take the u and the, the z, and I take the du and the z. So now what I get is I get 3x plus 2 times e to the x minus the integration of 3e to the x dx. Well, that integration is pretty straightforward. So now I have 3x plus 2e to the x minus 3e to the x and then plus c on the end of this. All right, so e to the x integration of that is just e to the x. The 3 is the coefficient, so it has no effect upon those pieces other than just multiplying it by that. 
So there's that integration now for us. Now you could go ahead and I go ahead and encourage you to pause the video and just kind of prove to yourself that this is indeed the integration of the, uh, of, of the original equation that we're dealing with it or expression we're dealing with. So now let's just work through another example here. Okay, so what do we, uh, what else can we do? Let's think about this and say what we need or what we're dealing with is any time we have a situation where the two functions are unrelated, meaning that the derivative of one is not the derivative of the other. So let's say we got x squared plus three like this, and we'll call this, and then we have some other function, right? So what is the other function that could be there? Well, just about anything. How about sine of x? And then dx, right? So now, when we look at this, we see that these are unrelated. If I were to do the derivative of either one of these, pick either one of these as being the u, that's not going to give this the other one, so substitution doesn't work here. So integration by parts is what I'm going to have to do. So I need to pick the u, and I need to pick the dz, right? Um, and keep in mind, in different texts, you might run across maybe dw or other things like that. So what do we do here? So let's let u equal... How about let's let u equal x squared plus 3, which means that du is equal to 2x dx, all right? And I'm going to let dz be sine of x dx, which means that z is going to be negative cosine of x. Now, what you'll notice I'm, I always do when I do substitution or when I do integration by parts is I always let the u almost always, but the u be the one of these two functions that is going to degrade faster. Okay, now when I say degrade faster, what I mean is think about what happened here. This was a degree of 2, this is a degree of 1 for the du part. That is making my life a little bit simpler. I got rid of one of the terms too. It went from being a binomial to being a mononomial, so that made it smaller for me. So I'm purposely engineering picking the value of u. I get to pick what I want u to be, so I'm picking u to be things that are going to make my life easier. So now, remember I do uz and I do duz, okay? <coughs> so now I'm going to do x squared plus 3 times negative cosine of x. And then I'll do the other part. So now I do an integration of 2x cosine x dx <coughs> and that was already had a negative sign with it so I'm just going to add make that a plus sign so keep in mind when we do the integration here the, the, the whole integration by parts business that we're doing here is uz minus the integration of z du okay that's the form we're using we're up here this started off as doing the integration of u dz Okay, and that's how this, this breaks out, if this, this formula is useful to you. Now, the problem I'm running into here, here with this is that this still has a mononomial times a trig function. I got the first part done, but the, the other pieces still cause me problems. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a whole nother u dz, and, and we can call it some other thing now if you want. We can call it z, and we can call it dw. Okay, so my z, or v value, pardon me, my v value, I'm going to pick it still to be something that degrades, which means my dv is going to be 2 dx. My dw is going to be cosine of x dx, which means that w is sine of x. Okay, all right, so now I can do the vw and the dvw. Okay, so I, I pulled down that entire first business there. So it's x squared plus 3, negative cosine of x, plus, and you keep track, and this is the only place where people really mess up once they think they hang this is the minus signs and all that stuff you got to keep track of. And then we have 2x sine of x, and then minus the integration of sine of x and 2 dx, all right? So we're almost done. So x squared plus 3 times negative cosine of x, and you could have moved that negative sign out in front if you'd wanted to. Uh, that looks like I got a minus sign there, doesn't it? I don't. 
don't know what that little stray mark there was. And then plus 2x sine x, and then minus the integration of 2 sine. Well, the integration of sine would be negative 2 cosine, and then plus c. And then, of course, you could simplify that if you wanted to into that. So there you go. There's integration by parts. There's two examples. I'm happy to make uh, do more examples and post them as B. Uh, sometimes these things get really messy. Uh, sometimes you, you can see this one right here. I actually had to do this process twice in order to get to my, my integration. But we want to keep going until we've gotten rid of that integration completely. We don't just do this once and think, oh, well, there, we're done. No, we have more integration still to do. So the idea is if you still have like right here, we still have that integration sign. We haven't gotten rid of it yet. We haven't eliminated it. We still have to keep going in order to deal with that completely. So keep that in mind and keep moving forward with these as best you can. Reach out with questions and comments and, and requests for additional uh, videos. Take care.